What's the name? John Hancock. What's the program? Point Sublime. <laughs> Point Sublime, presented by the John Hancock Mutual Life Insurance Company. Starring Cliff Arquette and Mel Blank, Point Sublime is written and produced by Robert L. Red. Point Sublime! In just a moment, we'll bring you the human story of a fellow named Ben Willis. But first, meet your friendly John Hancock agent. So, you know, friends, it's a real pleasure to look forward to the day when the mortgage on the home will be paid off, when that youngster enters college or gets married, or when we ourselves can enjoy greater leisure. And life insurance can help make these plans a reality. But still more important are the guarantees that go with such a plan. The guarantee, for example, that if anything happens to you, your loved ones will have money to help them adjust to their new way of life. And you get this sort of twofold guarantee in the new John Hancock Personal Security Plan. Remember this. Your family would probably need at least as much money as you earn in a year in order to readjust themselves to living without your support. So talk to your friendly John Hancock agent soon, won't you? He'll be glad to show you how the new Personal Security Plan can be fitted to your needs and circumstances. for the human story of a fellow named Ben Willett. It is one of those gray days in Point Sublime. The mountain tops at the back of town are hidden by low-hanging rain clouds. At Willett's store, a delivery truck with an old-fashioned upright piano is pulling up in front. The truck is driven by August Moon. Wait, 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 Oh, don't you, August Moon, where you been the last three hours with my delivery truck? Yeah, yeah, now, Mr. Willett, just keep your shirt, keep your shirt, uh, yeah, keep your pants on now. What are you hauling that big old piano around for? Well, I, I bought it up in Vernon this morning for, for 80, for, 80 for, uh, 70, for, uh, for 60 bucks. Oh. And, uh, and then uh, I told you the other day I was going to learn to play piano, remember? Now, let's get this straight, young man. Ever since you received that fool mail-order correspondence music course, I told you you couldn't have a piano in my store. Yeah, but it's going to rain. you got to help me unload it and bring it in, or else my, my ivories will get wet. Why do you think I sold the piano I had in there for 17 years? You wouldn't leave it alone. Oh, please, Mr. Willett. I I'll let you play my piano once in a while. No. I don't play good enough to get any fun out of it anymore. Well, you, you played pretty good that time in the uh, uh, before Christmas, when, when we was over at the uh, meeting Mrs. Hershey's. Flattery will get you nowhere. I'm going back in the store. Got a new book I'm reading. The American Past. Hey. Hey. What? I never noticed that before. When'd that happen? Did you break that window pane up there in that corner section? <laughs> yes, sir. When? Yesterday. How? Well, I, I was cleaning my slingshot and it went off. <laughs> no, stop with that stuff. Now, come on in the store. Yes, sir. Hey, but what about my piano? You'll just have to take it someplace else. I'm sorry. I'll get back to my new book here. Wonderful reading. The American Past, the history of the United States from Concord to Hiroshima. Hey, oh, look who's coming. Evelyn Hanover and... Oh, yeah, and Holly McVeigh, the Texas Longhorn. <laughs> Good morning, Ben. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I think it's about to rain. Hey, my name is Hanover. Hey, did you see my new old piano on the truck outside? Is that yours, August? Hey, yeah, sure. Where'd you get that monstrosity? Uh, up at Vernon. And uh, me, Miss Hanover, uh, Mr. Willett won't let me have the piano in the store. He won't. Well, oh, yeah, now, Evelyn, I mean, he's trying to separate me from culture. <laughs> now, that isn't so. He'll drive my customers away with his racket. Oh, he, he doesn't want me to become a, a great soloist. Like Rachman and the and the and the like Carmen Caballero. <laughs> Well, you think I want a bunch of tin pan alley cats hanging around my establishment? Now, you're very selfish, Ben. 
Mooney, you can bring your piano over to my cottage. I can't. Yeah, now, wait a minute. Or oh, you can bring it down to my place, Mooney. Practice all you want. Oh, wonderful. Oh, stop, stop. I say you're all trying to get his piano away from me. What? <laughs> Mooney, either we cart that piano right in this store now, or I'll never let you run your fingers through my rice bin again. Well, uh, gee, Mr. Willett, you got me. I, I give in. <laughs> Uh, I sure hate to uh, lose out with a re 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 rice bin. <laughs> well, come on, Holly Mooney, let's get our coats off. Get to work. Yeah, let's go. Come on. Oh, we'll need some planks and a heavy rope. I got all that stuff in the back. Say, look who's driving in. The little Scotch girl. Oh, yeah. I guess Laura Magruder's come into town from her uncle's farm. Mike Pagano's driving. Oh, look out, Mooney. They're pulling in the driveway. Yes, yeah, step back. You'll get run over, Mooney. Hello, Miss Hanover. Hello, everybody. Hello, Laura. Well, Laura. Hey, glad to see you, Laura. I haven't seen you and Mike all week. Oh, how are you, everybody? Oh, you're looking fine, Mike. Oh, feeling good for the first time in three years. How are you, Mooney? <laughs> I'm fine. Say, maybe Mike can help us move the piano in. For sure, sure thing. Hey, who owns this old blunderbuss? It's mine. I'm going to take a, a, a correspondence lessons. Are you going to help them in, Mike? Well, yeah, sure, Laura. Why? Miss Hanover, if you're not busy, maybe we could go somewhere and have a bit of a talk. Well, of course. Uh, let's walk over to my cottage. You'll be back pretty soon, huh, Laura? In a half an hour or such. Oh, okay. Now, nah, see you later, Abby, baby. Come on, boys. Let's get at this. I just felt a drop of rain. Oh, oh, gee, hurry. I, I want my ivories to get wet. Come on, hurry. hurry. Sit down, Laura. Thank you, Miss Hanover. You said uh, you wanted to talk to me. Yes. If I were back in Scotland, I'd be talking to my mother about this. Oh? Some way I I can't bring myself to confide in my aunt much. Miss Hanover. Yes, Laura. Were you ever in love? Well, now, Laura, I well I, I didn't mean to embarrass you by asking. <laughs> well, you see. You have been in love, haven't you, Miss Hanover? I've never married, Laura. Well, I hope you could help me sound out my own mind. You're Confused about your feelings? I. Toward Mike Pagano. Michael is a very fine person. Oh, Miss Hanover, did you ever fall in love with someone, man? Well, Laura, when I was much younger, there were infatuations. That... <laughs> I always got over them. Are you saying I'm just infatuated with Michael? No. You think I'm so very young, don't you? You're 18, Laura. Mike is 28. I've only gone with one other boy. Just one. You told me. Bruce. The boy you were to have married last Christmas, back in Scotland. Barely three months ago. And now I'm talking about another man. Laura, Bruce is dead. The living must go ahead and make the best of things for their own happiness. But it seems... Sometimes our ideas and our ideals change. And should change. No matter how careful we think we had planned things. Then perhaps I'm not fickle. Oh, no, you're not fickle, Laura. Have you told Michael you love him? No, I haven't known, really. Has Mike said he loves you? Many times. But he's never forced his feelings on me. Miss Hanover, how can a girl be sure when she's in love? I'm not sure I can tell you, Laura. Oh. I thought you could. Do you love Mr. Willett? Fine, no, Laura. Of course not. I, I think you do. I can tell how you act when you're around him. And I've watched him. You are in love with him, aren't you? Laura, dear, that's my only secret. And I thought I had it buried very deep. Well, I... You must never speak of it, Laura. Even Mr. Willett doesn't know. But I thought if you loved Oh, no, it's... It's so very different in my case. I'm... Well, you're young. Do you love Michael? No, I think for the first time I know. Yes, I think I do love Michael. This 
where you want it, Benny, my boy? Yeah, oh. yeah, that's yeah. good enough for now. It's okay. Here's the bench. Let me sit down and play. Well, Mooney, give us a rest before you start the racket. Oh, I wish Lara would get back. Hey, it's starting to drizzle. Hey, I wonder what Lara wanted to see Miss Hanover about. I don't know, dear. Mooney, stop it. <laughs> Show me how. Show me some chords, Mr. Willett, please. Go on, Benny. Play us a little tune. Let's see how it sounds. Here, here, here. Sit, sit down beside me. Huh? Yeah. No, I can't play good. Small thumbs. Well, here, here's a crazy one I kind of like. See if you recognize it. <laughs> bongo, bongo, bongo. I don't want to leave. Oh, no, no, no. Well, Tyler. Go on, Ben. <laughs> no, I'm glad to see you. You old bear tone, you. <laughs> <laughs> Hiya, fellas. Yeah. Where'd you get the piano? It's Mooney's latest purchase. Hey, uh, me and Mr. Willard, uh, I know a song I love. Oh, I just uh, love it. Uh, love it. Hey, uh, can you play uh, the Dreams or a Dime a Dozen? Yeah, 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 someday. Oh, I'll play it now, huh, please? No. Say, Ben, I'm kind of in a hurry. Can you wait on me? Yeah, sure thing, Webster. Sure. What can I get you? Well, my kids will be home for lunch, and Helen sent me down for a uh, loaf of Dutch bread, a pound of butter. Uh -huh. Two cans of Dole's sliced pineapple. I'll get them for you, Prano. You know, when it rains, I always feel gay, Webb. <laughs> the rains are a dime a dozen. And oh, what a way of passing time. <laughs> <laughs> there are lots of songs are written about dreaming, aren't there, Ben? Oh, you said it. Here you found the butter. Well, dreaming's a lot of fun, I guess. But uh, some men just never do anything about their dreams. Just go blissfully along, dreaming it up, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Two cans of sliced pineapple. I think it's swell for a man to dream of his future, but uh, the wise operator does something something about it. Well, for example? Well, for example, a lot of smart men invest in a John Hancock life insurance policy. It gives a man a comfortable feeling about his future. It's a solid step in a practical, foolproof plan toward making his dreams for the future come true. Well, I imagine it is at that, Webster. Here's your loaf of bread. Let's say a man's heart is set on something like retiring to a home of his own in the country. <laughs> Near a good little fishing stream. Huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> or if a man has children, he'll want to send them to college. Or maybe he dreams of enjoying an extra income in later years. Yeah. Well, goals like that can be reached, are being reached every day. Not just through hoping, but through the new John Hancock Personal Security Plan. Why, this plan serves a double purpose, as any friendly John Hancock agent will explain. Uh, what do you call it again, Webb? The Personal Security Plan. Not only helps provide for those things you want, but it can safeguard a man's family's future, too, if by any chance he should no longer be here to support them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, if this should ever happen... A man's wife and children would probably need at least as much as he makes in a year to help them readjust without hardship to their new way of life. And a guaranteed sum of this size can very likely be provided by setting aside as little as a few dollars a week. Yeah, I see, I see. Yes, sir, Ben. I highly recommend that people talk to their John Hancock agent about setting up a personal security plan that will exactly fit their needs and their income. Mm -hmm. Oh, golly, look at the hour. Five minutes to 12. I got to get these groceries home to Helen. Yeah, well, Webb. Uh... Oh, my goodness, look who's coming down the street. What? Oh, hey, hey. Oh, nuts. <laughs> I'm getting out of here just in time. See you later, boys. Yeah. Look at Hattie waddling down the street in her raincoat. Well, I don't want her. You can have her. She's too fat for me. <laughs> <laughs> the old gossip. Yeah. Golly, look at it rain now. Hey, look, look. Oh, thank goodness. What, Mike? See, coming down the street behind Mrs. Hirsch, Lara, and Miss Hanover. Oh, yeah. Well, here comes Hattie now. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, Hattie. Oh, goodness, I'm all wet. <laughs> You're telling me. <laughs> oh. Well, where did you get that ugly old upright piano, Ben Willis? Well, it's Mooney's. Hmm. Piano. To, to me, it's beautiful. Oh, well, never mind, never mind. Let me see, now, what did I come in here for? Well, that's what I like to know. No, I mean, uh... Oh, my, but it's raining now. Oh, thank heavens you're back, Lara. I thought maybe something had happened to you. Why, no, Michael. Oh, isn't that sweet? He thought something had happened to her. <laughs> oh... Oh, hey, look, look, we've got to scramble, Lara. i got to go down to the Palisades and check my trailer. I know. You know, Mr. Willett, my trailer's just sitting down there ever since I went to work um, for Mr. Magruder's farm. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's raining so hard. Why don't you let Laura stay here? 
Don't you want to wait here with us, Laura, dear? Well, if Michael wants me to go down with him. Come on, Laura. Give yes, me Michael. To her. Thank you, Miss Hanover. Yes, Laura. Well, you never see a one of them anymore without the other. Well, they're nice kids. Kids? He's no babe in the woods. Well, never mind, Hattie. Moody, stop that, dear. Yes, stop it. Oh, I'll never get to practice. The best thing he's played so far. Well, I can't understand what that Magruder girl sees in Mike Pagano. Well, leave them alone, Hattie. Oh, I suppose you think they're in love. Tommy Roth. She's just a giddy little girl chasing after a pair of pants. That is not so. What if it was? Well, Hattie, please. I wish you'd leave my store if you're gonna talk this way. Oh, you're all so dumb. Going down to check over his trailer, is he? Well, why didn't she stay here? Yeah. They're going down there where he can hug her and kiss her and... Marry her! Well, I say, that girl needs someone to guide and warn her against a man like that, so I am going to take over. What? Yes. You leave him alone, Hattie Hirsch. Now I wish you'd get out of my store. All right, all right, I'll go, I'll go. I know what I'm not wanting. Yeah. But you wait till I tell Laura Magruder. Oh, that woman. Is she going down to Mike's trailer and cause trouble? Oh, who knows? Hattie's getting to be the kind of a person you don't care for right at first. And when you get to know her real well, you hate her. Tommy, <laughs> uh, I'm going to practice. Hey, I, I think this piano and me may, might be a little out of tune. <laughs> yeah, but I don't care. Two of Point Sublime. In the store, Evelyn Hanover and Ben Willard are worrying about how to keep Hattie from talking to Laura while Laura and Mike are down in his trailer that is parked on the palisade. Listen to the rain pattern on the roof, Mike. Yeah, I don't like rain. Everything's so cozy and nice here. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Well, say, I want to take this picture of my brother out to your uncle's farm with me. Michael. Yeah, what is it, kid? I asked you before, don't call me kid. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Laura. I... I love the rain. Oh, Michael, darling. Hey, what goes, what goes with that Michael, darling? Sit down here on the seat beside me. You, uh, had a change of heart or something? Do you remember what you said to me that night? Out at the farm... When we stood by the fence down by the old barn and watched the moon in the clouds. You... you remember that? I... well, I finally made up my mind. You yeah? have? I talked with Miss Hanover. What's she got to do with us? She was so sweet and sad and so all alone. I shouldn't want to make her a mistake. She said I shouldn't let life slip by me. I love you, Michael. You're kidding. Oh. Oh, Laura. Michael. Oh, Laura, Laura, my darling. Oh, what a lucky guy I am. Here. Yes, Michael. For the first time. Let me take you in my arms. Yes. And kiss you. Kiss you, little Laura. You do love me. Hear the rain on the roof. Yes. Yes, Laura. Michael, my dearest. It would be 
awful if Hattie gets to Laura and tries to poison her mind against Mike Pagano. Well, when I telephoned Hattie 20 minutes ago, she said she'd come right over to the store uh, here. Try to stop her. She might ruin their lives. When you talked with Laura this morning, Abby, what'd you say to the little kid? Oh, I don't know. She asked me if I'd ever been in love. Yeah? I told her... Well... Mm-hmm. Abby. Yes, Ben? You get lonesome, too, don't you? Being alone? Yeah. I guess I do at times, Ben. We aren't getting any younger. I know. I probably wouldn't be too easy to get along with. Well, I have my faults, too, Ben. Abby, would you marry me? Yes, Ben. Thanks, Abby. <laughs> you know, I think it'll be real nice when you... <laughs> You will! I said it. I finally said it. I wasn't paying any attention to what I just said, and I said it. It was so easy and... Oh, bless you, baby. When shall we announce our engagement? Now, today? Well, couldn't we just have a couple of days to get used to it first? But if you want the you funny, sweet thing. Yeah, well, let's not tell anybody yet. I... <laughs> Oh, oh, my gosh, what will my rival Howie say when he finds out? Oh, poor Howie. But he'll wish us well. You know, we have Laura and Mike to really thank for this. We have? Say, how do you feel, Evie? I feel kind of giddy. <laughs> oh, Kevin, pull yourself together quick, Ben. What? Who? How? We didn't see her. Here comes Hattie. Oh, Laws, am I blushing? Am I, am I you? Well, well, what do you want me for, Ben Willard? Hello, Hattie. <laughs> Why, Ben, what have you been doing? Your face is crimson red. I... I guess I got too close to an old flame. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Have that harem scarum a Groody girl and her boyfriend come back yet? You no. Know, now, Harry... It's high time someone puts that girl wise to an older man like Pagano. He's not old. Oh, don't be naive, Evelyn. There's ten years difference between them. And her mother away off in Scotland. Yeah, Harry. Well... I bet you were sure pretty when you was a young girl. Well, Henry thought so when he asked me to marry him. Mm -hmm. You're older than your husband, Hattie. Uh, yes, but uh, since I married Henry, he's aged nicely. <laughs> Well, uh, did anybody try to stop you from marrying Henry just because there was a difference in your ages? I wouldn't have stood for it. Mm -hmm. You were in love with him, huh? Certainly. Oh, gee, Hattie, age doesn't rule love. If it did, you and Henry wouldn't have married and had all those good years together. Well, I... Uh, <clears throat> Henry's been good to me, and the poor man's been so patient. Yeah. Well, Hattie, Laura and Mike are in love, and... Oh, I know what you mean. Mike's kind of rough, but he's got integrity, and Laura's a fine little person. Lead them to their own designs, Hattie. Don't mess it up for him. What do you say, baby? Oh. Oh, I'm so glad you stopped me. Oh, no, Hattie, don't cry. I can't help it. I didn't realize we were really in love. Well, I guess lots of people are in love, huh, Evelyn? Being really. Oh, love in the world loves with you. Thank you, Ben. Now I'm so miserably happy. <laughs> oh, here, Patty. My handkerchief. Oh, yeah, stop making a scene. I can see you're happy. Hey, listen. Who do you think we just saw? Well, now, let me tell him. Laura man. and Mike. Yeah, now, come and see him. Hey, what is this? Yeah, we, we know something. We know something. Well, what is it, Howie? Well, we just talked to Laura and Mike. Yeah, and here they are. <laughs> Show sure, Laura, honey. Show sure, everybody. Look, I'm so happy. Laura, oh. an engagement ring. Oh, blessings on you, my <laughs> sure. uh, What? No, no, Hattie means it. Oh, that's wonderful, kids. Congratulations. I've been carrying that ring around in my pocket for three weeks. Oh, it's a beautiful diamond, Laura. Oh, Miss Hanover, you helped me make up my mind this morning. I can never thank you enough. Well, I have something to thank you for, too, Laura. Oh? What's that, Evelyn? Well, folks. Evelyn! Don't you dare shout at me, Ben Willis. Well, you started to tell. Tell him and tell what? 
What you been up to, Betty? Yeah, I give it uh, uh, a little surprise. Uh, let's talk about something else, huh? We, yeah, uh, we should help Mike and Laura celebrate. Oh, yeah. If I could only play my piano now. Oh, move over, Mooney. Let me ask this thing. Come on over here, folks. Got to have a little get-together. Oh, yeah. 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 I didn't know my mom. I know, I know. Let's all sing together happily in the spirit of love. Yeah, what do we sing? How about well, Ulang Lang Syne? No, no, it ought to be something romantic. <laughs> well, I know I'm a big sap, Mr. Willett, but if you play something uh, sentimental, well, I'll just bust out balling right yeah, now. Yeah, you would. <laughs> Mike, you darling. Benny, how come you can't look me in the eye? What you and Evelyn got is a surprise. Yeah, I'll tell you later, Holly. I'll see you around sometime. Uh, how about an... uh, How about this song? I went over to my desk and I dug it out. Here's the sheet music. Well, let me see it, Mooney. Oh, good heavens, that old one. Pistol Packing Mama. Yeah, well, I like it. I never heard it. Hey, Laura never heard it, Mr. Willett. Play it. Well, set it up on piano, Mooney. Yeah, yeah, there. Now, this is okay for an opening number in our family concert. <laughs> yeah, so Laura and Mike got engaged. <laughs> what do you know about that, Evelyn? Uh, let me stand in here close to Ben. Yeah. How come Ben and Evelyn are acting so clubby today? Well, I don't know. I'll play it, Ben. Uh, how do we do it? Well, I'll start off singing the first verse. Yes. Hattie and Evie can do a sister act on the second verse. All right. How I can take the third. Oh, you know I can, see? Oh, oh, yeah. uh, Laura and Mike can join in on the chorus. Oh, sure. And Mooney, you take the last stanza. Oh, oh, oh this will be gay. <laughs> gay, I'll say. Oh, Hattie, aren't you happy? I'm so happy I may cry again. Well, I'm going to start before you do. <laughs> okay, here we go. Never flirt with a gal named Tex down old Texas way. Cause if you do, I'm telling you, this is what you'll have to say. Oh, well, now, now it's Hattie and Evie's turn. The modern Dolly Sisters. I'll give you kids the introduction. Singing songs in cabaret and worry having fun. Until one night we sing sing right and now we're on the run. Oh, 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 Texas Panhandler. Oh, baby, you know I can't carry on. Uh, here you go, here you go, Tex. Well, Happy made a batch of corn, the revenue was came. The draw was slow, and so they know you can't do that to me. Oh, Okay, Mooney. Street. Would you like to go along with me? Why, yes, Howard, I think I would. Oh, but Abby, now, please, I don't want you to go... Uh, ben, don't you think it's only fair we tell Howard? Well, baby, I... <laughs> I guess you can't keep a secret like ours very long. <laughs> mm. Come, Howard, dear. Say, what goes between you two? Hey, Abby, what is it, Ben? Ain't we the ones? <laughs> <laughs> Friends.
friends, remember this. By setting aside only a very few dollars a week, you can begin right away to make sure that your financial future will be secure and at the same time know beyond a doubt that those you love will be provided for if by any chance your support should someday be withdrawn. So have a talk real soon with your friendly John Hancock agent. Let him show you how the new personal security plan can be fitted exactly to the job you wanted to do. You'll find him ready to help you benefit from the 85 years experience of the John Hancock Mutual Life Insurance Company. What's the name? John Hancock. John Hancock. <laughs> Sublime is written and produced by Robert L. Redd and stars Cliff Arquette and Mel Blank with the original cast including Jane Morgan, Earl Ross, Verna Felton, Wally Mayer, Daphne Drake, and Vincent Pelletier. Music is under the direction of Charles Dan. This is Art Gilmore saying goodnight to you from the thousands of friendly agents of the John Hancock Mutual Life Insurance Company. Next Monday night at this same time, tune in again to Point Sublime.